Hey, what's up? I'm Bon. Let's talk about Mass Effect. Yes, I still have my demon eyes. If you want to know why, check out my videos or my podcast around the time this is recorded, uh, and you can find out there. Today, I am going to do a kind of proper uh, breakdown of the 2020 uh, Video Game Awards uh, teaser trailer for the next Mass Effect game. I'm doing this because um, I kind of did this in the middle of a video like over a year ago. Um, obviously, I hadn't really discovered my Mass Effect fandom uh, when this came out, so I didn't cover it. And um, I care a lot about it now. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. So I want to do a proper breakdown video. Uh, it's timely because we will probably get some kind of information here in about a month from the time I'm recording this in early October uh, about the new game. Uh, but we haven't gotten anything substantial in a while. So um, I'm going to play through the trailer once. Uh, and then uh, go back and uh, we'll and I'll talk about it a little bit, but then we'll go back and stop and start and break it down a bit. So here we go. so good it's a great it's a great teaser trailer it's even two years later it still gives me chills so okay so we will um start here from the beginning um <clears throat> i do like how it says likely mature it's like yeah the next game probably will be um so to the, the this is one of it's so hilarious how since this trailer came out over the last almost two years this single frame may be one of the most like controversial, uh, you know, frames from a game trailer, at least in the Mass Effect community, uh, is um, we have what appears to be the Andromeda Galaxy um, up up here in the top left, uh, and then the the Milky Way Galaxy, um, much more um, kind of placed, uh, much more in the forefront here. Um, my take on this, especially after all this time, after some of the hints and clues that we've gotten and a lot of speculation, is that um, to me, this is one of the first things of like, hey, this next game's Milky Way. We, we haven't forgotten about you over there. We know that there's the Ryder twins and all their terrible facial animations over here somewhere. Um, but this right here, of this dive into the Milky Way, um, to to me is just is very. Um, I I think there's a message there personally. Um, I don't think they would do that without uh, at least some purpose. Um, uh, Mike Gamble has you know, alluded to Andromeda not being like completely ignored, and that you know you know that first shot is very purposeful. 
um, that, that this is an image that, you know, th there's a point to this, uh, as I assume there's messaging in this entire trailer and the poster they released last year and everything. But, um, yeah, so, you know, take it for what it is. I think this is a big, you know, this is what we're doing now. This is still there, but that's just me. So we dive um, into the Milky Way. We start hearing some static and things like that. Um, if if you if you listen closely, a bunch of this uh, radio chatter is actually from like the Apollo missions and early human sp uh, space flight, like real early human space flight. So right there, the caption says, um, what's your station? I believe that's actually Arcturus station, uh, which was uh, in, I think still is uh, like the biggest space station um, that the humans have made. And I believe it was actually made, um, you know, before they went into um, or it was one of the earliest things. Basically, I believe that's where the, the, the first war, the first contact war started. Um, and I think it's kind of saying Arcturus Station, unknown vessel approaching. Yeah. And that's the first contact protocol was with the Turians. And it was a war over the humans opening up a new relay, the Turians and the rest of the council species. That's illegal. You can't do that. And so they were going to stop it because the last time someone opened up a relay uh, without knowing what they were doing, they released the Rachni. Uh, on the galaxy, which uh, if you're familiar with the game, you understand the gravity of that. If you don't, then look it up. <laughs> and that right there is the, there was a very short war with the Turians. Um, and then the humans were basically uh, brought into the council species and uh, you know, some, some, some kind of peace was established. Uh, and humans became part of the galaxy and the, the citadel species. So that's the other really big thing that Andromeda fans are, are grasping onto that first shot with Andromeda in the, in the background. And then this right here where it sounds pretty clear, they're saying uh, arc six is away. Um, the reason that's substantial is because as far as we know, there were only five arcs um, as part of the, uh, the initiatives Andromeda uh, mission, um, and we know of the five, and a sixth arc would be um, less, uh, would be a new, would be new ground. So um, a, a sixth arc is never mentioned in Andromeda, as far as I know, and um, it seems pretty clear that this will have uh, some gravity um, to the story. Um, very well may be a way to try to link the, the stories of Andromeda and the Milky Way uh, with the trilogy. Um, I, I think that uh, we, and I'll explain more as we see more of the trailer, I think that we will um, be playing the game that takes place not that long after Mass Effect 3, um, but I do think they'll do a lot to still try to connect the trilogy to Andromeda, even if it's like investigating the initiative, the mysterious benefactor from the Andromeda game and story. Uh, that's like a big part of that, um, but we'll have to wait and see. But this Arc 6 thing is a, a pretty obvious nod to something. Uh, here we have uh, uh, what I assume is supposed to be a bunch of destroyed ships and debris from the Reaper War um, and uh, in some capacity the aftermath of that. So in theory, this should be a fairly substantial uh, symbol in here uh, that we have a, a one of the relays uh, surrounded by all of this debris. What I do think is interesting about it is that this relay um, does not appear to be functional. There typically is a big um, Mass Effect core in the middle glowing uh, within these uh, rings. Um, at the end of Mass Effect 3, uh, I think basically no, no matter which ending you pick, um, the, the, the relay gets destroyed. These rings break apart and fly away. You know, a big arm of this will fly off. Um, so um, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be symbolic that this one isn't actually broken up 
or if it's just what they decided to do with this model in this trailer. So we are, we look at some star system, and then now we have um, this ship flying onto a planet. We people have been trying to put together like what planet this could be and which star system and stuff. I suspect it's just a generic planet with a couple moons that look cool. But who knows? Maybe we'll find out. So this is a pretty substantial shot, and I think it's going to be very telling for where they're going with the next game. Um, the two big things, literally, uh, to notice here is a figure walking up this um, snowy mountainside. Uh, but if you look closer, you realize that this snowy mountainside is a big old giant dead reaper. Um, something I don't think many people maybe picked up uh, or they picked up one or the other is that there is another dead reaper back here. I, I assume it's dead. Um, it's, it doesn't move. And I can't imagine our character here would be uh, here if this was the living reaper. So um, this is my main proof or at least suggestion for why I think they're going to pick. Um, I think they're going to canonize a bunch of stuff for this next game uh, in order to kind of shrink the story down to a manageable point so that with this next game or hopefully series of games, they can re-expand it back out. Um, I think that's just what they're going to have to do because if they try to take all of the endings and all of the choices from the trilogy into account, I think that will just lead to a shallow, just not very good game. Um, and honestly, I would argue that while I understand why people like the synthesis or the control endings, they're kind of terrible endings to move forward with. Just my opinion where I think this is a pretty clear symbol that they're going to canonize the destroy ending um, simply with the Reapers being dead in the synthesis or control ending. There shouldn't be dead Reapers. Sure. Maybe these are the only two dead ones and there's thousands of them still living. I would take the symbolism here as all the Reapers are dead. Uh, and this, this person is walking up them for some reason. So uh, this is another one of the big debated things. Um, this is one of those things where I I think people should pay attention to the, the symbolism and not overthink the reasoning too much. Um, this is a character picking up a shard of an N7 helmet. Um, uh, you, you can't see my camera too well, but this is roughly this part of the helmet right here. I believe it's like by the ear or the jawbone. Um, and... Uh, look, there, there's a lot of N7s. The N7 is a military rank. It's a highly qualified individual akin to the modern day uh, Rangers or Navy SEALs or Spec Ops of some capacity. And um, I think that uh, the, the, a lot of people put together like, well, okay, say destroy ending is the is the um, uh, the cannon. Uh, and say this is supposed to be Shepard. This is a, in my opinion, very obvious reference to Shepard. Um, why, if Shepard was on the Citadel and uh, had his, uh, or on Earth, and had uh, his or her helmet blown off, uh, exploded uh, and during the final run, uh, why would a shard of their helmet be on this random planet? Totally fair question. Totally reasonable to ask. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless this planet is supposed to be a like winterized Earth. Maybe the impact of the 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 crucible, or maybe this is Earth for all we know. I, I kind of doubt it, but maybe it is. I don't know. Um, there's also been theories that this may be a helmet shard from the beginning of Mass Effect 2, and that maybe this is the planet that... Um, uh, Shepard's body was found on and recovered by Liara and Farron, uh, and then given to Cerberus to rebuild um, because the Shadow Broker, uh, or the current Shadow Broker at the time, was trying to find Shepard as well for the collectors. Um, I, I don't know. 
whatever their explanation is going to be, my explanation is that this is a teaser trailer. It's supposed to show you a bunch of stuff to get excited. Uh, and I think whether it's what's going to happen or not, I want to play a shepherd again. I, under I understand why other people don't. But them showing this little tiny couple second scene, um, I, I really don't think they would have done this unless Shepard's going to be involved in the next game in some capacity. Uh, because if, if they show that if they do this and then don't have Shepard involved at all, whether it's as a player or whatever, um, that would be a that'd be an interesting take, especially because. Of that, um, that's Liara to Sony, um, a, a very prominent, uh, you know, main character in the first three games. And the second game, she kind of falls off a little bit, but not too much. Um, but a highly, highly, um, you know, well-known character in the franchise. Whether she's liked or not is up to you. Um, this has been confirmed that this is Liara. Um, the voice actress for her has confirmed she's in the next game. Um, so, so this is like the only concrete thing we really know at this point is that Liara is in it. Again, I will go back to my previous point. They, if they made this teaser trailer and this would have been early in the process, 2020 was probably very, very, very early in pre-production. They may have not even had the story figured out yet. I don't know, but it was a, it was a choice to, to have Liara picking up a shred or a shard of N7 armor that is an obvious reference to Shepard. And that's just the thing I can't ignore. I, I think that is very symbolic. Um, one another thing to, to notice here that before they do the um, the shift of focus, um, we have this ship back here. Um, we've seen a version of this ship in some uh, concept art. I think it's called like a mud skipper. Um, I don't think this is the same same ship that's in that, though. Um, this is also not the same ship um, that's in the teaser poster from 2021. Uh, but we, what we have here is pretty obviously a Solarian to me, um, a pretty obviously a Krogan, uh, and then a human here. Um, this has been somewhat controversial. Um, there's people who think that this is uh, really obviously like the initiative armor um, from Andromeda. So there is a bunch of speculation like, oh, is that Ryder? I there's no logical reason for Ryder to ever be in the Milky Way again, um, especially in the post Reaper War events. Uh, Ryder should be asleep um, unless this is many hundreds of years later, which I do not think is what they're going to do. And if they do, I think that's going to suck, but I I'm open to it. Um, so this is a human. Um, is it the initiative armor? I don't know. There's a chance it is. And maybe it was just a leftover model for them to use during this animation. Um, maybe the initiative has a role in the post Reaper war universe in the Milky way. Not all of the initiative went to Andromeda. They would have left people behind. The mysterious benefactor was left behind. Maybe they have some kind of role in the post Reaper war universe. Maybe their armor proliferates. Maybe, um, you know, they become a, another one of the vendors or something who knows um but regardless i'm like 99 sure that's a human uh and we'll have to see what that means from there um but but yeah the the liara here is is cool i i like liara a lot as a character um another big uh, controversial uh hot take is uh liara has lines on her face and so between the that armor, the um, the arc six comment in the opening scene, uh, as well as Liara's appearance here, um, a lot of Andromeda fans have been saying like, "Oh, this is going to take place hundreds of years after Mass Effect Three. Liara is a matriarch now, um, you know, and that's how they're going to involve Andromeda. There's going to be like a a wormhole, or they're going to use you know from the end of Andromeda you." Uh, I forget what that planet is called, uh, that they're going to use tech to, to make uh, a, a way to instantly go back to the Milky Way. I mean, maybe. Um, I, I will say that the lines on Liara's face um, are there in Mass Effect 3. Um, maybe not this drastic. Um, this is also a brand new model or this animation. You know, it's, it's just not that. I, I wouldn't take that too seriously. 
especially because the oldest uh, Asari that we ever meet in the Mass Effect universe during the series of the games is um, is Arya at Omega. And while I know people have pointed out that like uh, Benezia looked a little older and she was an obvious matriarch and stuff, um, I mean, I, I don't think I think that was more of a, a an art, an artistic choice in Mass Effect One, because in Mass Effect Two and Three, when you see Arya, she doesn't look any older than uh, than Liara, um, but she's the oldest Asari that we're aware of. So, uh, which I think she's tagged around uh, seven or eight hundred years old. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, and on top of that, uh, Liara's father, who we meet in Mass Effect Two and Three. Um, it doesn't appear that old to me, but she's obviously older than Arya. So, um, you know, uh, or, or uh, older than Liara. So, so I don't know. M make of it what you will. Ugh. And then that music just gets me every time. So, so then we have the Mass Effect will continue. Um, there, there's a lot of debate um, right now whether is it going to be Mass Effect 4 uh, or was Andromeda 4, so they're going to call it Mass Effect 5. I actually, uh, I consider it 4 if it's going to be a direct sequel to, th uh, to 3. Um, I still think Andromeda, um, it was meant to be its own trilogy, so I almost feel like it was like Mass Effect Andromeda 1. And I feel like it was kind of a an offshoot of the franchise um, and, and should be kind of treated that way, even though the next game, I think, will be four in, in every uh, discernible way. I also think that it um, will have a name. I think it'll be Mass Effect Reborn, Mass Effect Rebuilt, Mass Effect uh, something. I think it's going to have like a like a name and not be numbered, but we'll have to uh we'll have to wait and see so so there's all my breakdown um after you know a year and a half two years of of pretty intense fandom and trying to nitpick and pay attention to every single little detail um th those are all the conclusions i kind of come to with this trailer at this point if you agree if you disagree let me know down in the comments i'm curious uh to what other people think um and, and this is what I have for now. Um, so in about a month, we'll have uh, the 2022 in seven day. I suspect we'll get some kind of teaser during that. Uh, who knows how big it'll be or small. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, if, if there's anything pertinent, I'll, I'll probably do some kind of video where I compare uh, this trailer, last year's uh, poster, and whatever the new information is to kind of try to compile what we know already. Um, I am doing a giveaway of like $300 of Mass Effect merch almost uh, here very soon. So pay attention to my Twitter at Bond Diesel or at the Echo Cast. Uh, that's how you'll be entering. So keep an eye on that. And that's where I'm going to wrap this thing up. So uh, please subscribe to this channel if you like this video and you want more videos about Mass Effect. Uh, please uh, you know, like the video, comment down below, subscribe, uh, check out my other videos about Mass Effect, or check out my podcast, which is on here and on podcast platforms called The Echo Cast. It's a weekly gaming uh, news show where I also talk about Mass Effect and The Division in their own little segments. I've also done some really cool interviews, and I plan on doing more of those. Uh, you can check me out on social media as at Bond Diesel on Twitter, as well as most other places. And um, that's all I have for this one. So until next time.